Okay, so today we will cover chapter four, which is about the normal distribution. Okay, so just, just so we have an idea of why we're bothering with the normal distribution and where we're headed, um, I think on the first day of class I kind of drew this picture and I said, first we cover about describing data, and then we talk about probability, okay, which we covered. And then we move from probability into probability distributions. And last week we saw our first probability distribution, which was the binomial distribution. And today we're going to see the normal distribution. And our understanding of these probability distributions allow us to understand sampling distributions which we'll cover next week, sampling distributions, and the central limit theorem. Okay, And then we bring these two together, and we move into statistical inference. And this takes us right up to the, uh, the midterm exam. And then after the midterm exam, we go into just a, a variety of statistical inference methods. Okay, so uh, it's more so like a, a survey of survey of statistical inference methods, so we're just going to cover a whole bunch of different ones, uh, just kind of very briefly give you a brief introduction to a bunch of different um, inference methods. So, <clears throat> so in the previous weeks we learned probability and the binomial distribution, and then so today we're going to learn more about the normal distribution, and then next week We'll learn the central sampling distributions, the central limit theorem, and our kind of our first application of statistical inference. All right. Is that right? Okay. Okay, so. That's so. Uh, where we are, where we're headed. So the normal distribution is a theoretic probability distribution. Okay, and so just to, just to review, what is a random variable? Example. I'm, I'm sorry. An example. Yeah, yeah. Okay, give me an example of a random variable, or what? What exactly? Yeah. Or what? What is a random variable?
Okay, so it's the outcome to uh, like a random trial or a random event. Ran I should say random trial. And the outcome is numeric. Okay? And so the normal distribution is... Um, uh, it's a probability distribution for a, you know, basically a certain kind of random variable that fits the normal distribution. So, again, just re reviewing what a random variable is. It's the outcome to a random trial, and the outcome is numeric. And so, so far we've looked at um, basically discrete random variables. For example, the distribution of uh, the number of vertebrae for a certain species of fish. We said, you know, this, you know, 22 vertebrae is this likely, and 23 vertebrae has this probability, and 24 vertebrae has this probability. So we had created a probability distribution for uh, a certain, the number of vertebrae in a certain species of fish. We looked at a binomial random variable. And does anyone want to tell me what, what a binomial random variable describes? Even with two options of, of success and failure. Okay, so that's, that's a scenario where we would use a binomial random variable. But the number that you get in a binomial random variable, what is that number? Independent trial. It's not that that's uh, one of the things to define the random variable, but that's not the uh, the output. The output is it's the number of successes that we observe. So if we say we're going to do ten trials, the output is how many successes do we get in those ten trials? Maybe we want to know what's the probability that we get eight successes out of ten. Or what's the probability that we only get five successes out of ten? Whatever we're, we've defined as successes, whether it's the coin lands heads, or the person has blood type A, or uh, you know, the seashell that you picked up is streaked, whatever it might be. Okay. So we uh, we've covered binomial binomial random variables which is um, tells us the probability that we see a particular number of successes in n trials if there are only two possible outcomes for each trial. Okay. And the binomial random variable is an example of a discrete random variable. Okay. Okay. Discrete meaning it can only take on certain values. If you flip the coin ten times, it can land heads four times, it can land heads five times or six times. It can never land heads 5.5 .5 times, okay? Because you're either you you only have a whole number of successes if you flip the coin ten times. Okay, the normal distribution, on the other hand, is a continuous random variable. Okay, so if I may go. the next slide. I'll, I'll wait for you guys to finish writing. Okay. 
So the normal random variable, so uh, is a continuous random variable. Okay, so it can take on any value between negative infinity and positive infinity. Okay. Um, Take on any value in the range okay so you know continuous random variables don't have to go from negative infinity to positive infinity but the normal random variable does happen to go from negative you know it could be continuous from 0 to 100 and you can take on you know any value from 0 to 100 but in this case, we're going from negative infinity to positive infinity, OK? So the, the normal random variable can take on any value. So uh, and it, it can take on, you know, it can be, you know, 100.07268. And it can also be uh, 100.0726. 8, 2, 3, or 4, whatever, whatever number you want it to be, okay? Any, any value, really, okay? The normal distribution, okay, or a random variable that follows the normal distribution, or a normal random variable, looks like this, okay? It is unimodal and symmetric. This is often called a bell curve, I guess, because people think you can put like a, I don't know, a handle on here, and maybe there's a bell that rings or something. But uh, you know, don't draw that there. Um, so it's called a, this is called a bell curve, and um, and in the center. The center here is the both the mean and the median of our distribution. Okay, so the halfway point, where fifty percent is to the left and fifty percent to the is to the right, is also the mean. And what is another way of thinking of the mean in terms of describing the center? Hmm. It is the average, that's true, but it's also the balance point to our data. Okay, and so uh, if you were to balance this on a seesaw, it would balance right there at the halfway point. Okay, and we uh, express the mean because this is a random variable. We express the mean with the symbol mu. So the mean of the random variable is of our normal distribution is mu. And the spread is measured with with the standard deviation. the symbol sigma for that. Okay. So here we're talking about a theoretic distribution or the, the population and we say it follows uh, a normal random variable. Okay, And the normal random variable has properties such that if I go one standard deviation above from the mean, okay, so Right here, this center line, I'm going to say is mu. And if I go sigma out this way, where do I end up? This line ends up being what? Mu plus sigma. 
Okay? And if I go in the opposite direction, the same amount, one sigma over here, what do I, where do I end up over here? Mu minus sigma. Okay? And so we have something called the uh, empirical rule. And that is 68% uh, or about 2 thirds of the data in a normal distribution is within one standard deviation of the mean, or uh, that is to say, between mu minus sigma and mu plus sigma. Okay, so about two thirds of our data is between here and here, and so if my picture were accurate, if we were to paint this whole thing, about two-thirds of the paint used to paint this entire shape would be used to paint from here to here. And I would have only about one-third out here and one-third out there. I mean, I'm sorry, one-sixth out here and one-sixth out there. Oh, about. Okay. If I were to go another standard deviation, out this way. Okay, out here now I end up where? Mu plus two sigma. Okay, and if I go do the same in the opposite direction, I end up at mu minus two sigma. I get 95% about. About 95% of the data. is between mu minus 2 sigma and mu plus 2 sigma, okay? Or it's within two standard deviations of the mean. Okay. And if I go out one more, Another sigma, I end up at mu plus 3 sigma. And over here, I end up at mu minus 3 sigma. Then almost all of my data, OK, 99.7% of the data is within three standard deviations of the mean. kind of properties-ish of the, uh, the normal distribution here. Okay, so these, are, these, these three numbers are good to keep in mind. These are good to, good to memorize here. Sixty-eight, ninety-five, ninety-nine, seven for one, two, and three standard deviations of the mean. Okay, so why is all of this useful? Well, it turns out that a lot of things in life follow the normal distribution. Okay, um, so let's uh, let's. Can I go to the next slide here? So many, um, 
many things in life. Follow the normal distribution, okay? And so let's just try this out here. So, uh, I don't know. So, so technically it goes from negative infinity to positive infinity, but once it's it's actually quite difficult to get numbers really much larger than three standard deviations of the mean, okay? Because 99.7% are within three standard deviations of the mean, and so only about three in a thousand times do you get something uh, bigger than three standard deviations of the mean. I mean, but it but it happens, okay? You know, three in a thousand is is not the worst of of odds, okay? Outlier. I wouldn't. Yeah, I mean, you, I guess. Well, outlier is kind of a tenuous uh, description here, but, um, you know, a lot of things are much m more infrequent than three in a thousand, right? Like, struck by lightning is one in 40,000 and things like that. So, um, so anyway, uh, many things in life follow the normal distribution. So, for example, uh, human height and especially if we isolate one um, gender, or so for example, uh, in the US, okay, uh, the height of females, we'll say the height of adult women uh, follows, and so this is shorthand to say, or here, I'll, I'll, I'll write it in English first follows the normal distribution with mean, uh, uh, for simplicity we're going to say with mean equal to 64 inches and standard deviation equal to 3 inches. Okay, It's a little bit different than this, but for simplicity, we'll just keep with these nice, nice whole numbers, okay? And so, um, in shorthand, instead of having to write uh, height of adult women follows the normal distribution with this, we might say um, height of adult women and uh, we can write it this way. Right, and this essentially says exactly the same thing as this, but this is our shorthand version, okay? So this tilde means follows this distribution, n being the normal distribution, and the first number you see is the mean, and the second number is the standard deviation, okay? So if I wanted to label this, I would put 64, right in the middle as the mean, okay? And then I would, let's see, probably right around here, I would say this is one standard deviation. And so that would put me where? One standard deviation above the mean would put me, what's the number I would write here? 67. 67, good. And then another standard deviation above the mean would put me at what, 70? And another standard deviation would put me where? 73. Okay, and then let's go the other way. So this would take me down to 61. and 
that okay? My drawing and labeling of the uh, normal distribution. Okay, and so if we use the empirical rule, we would say we would make statements. So based on the empirical rule, okay, we can make broad claims like about 68% or two thirds of women in the US 68% of adult U.S. women are between, or have heights between, sixty-one inches tall and sixty-seven inches tall. That's five foot one and five seven. And I hope that kind of matches your intuitive sense of how tall uh, the women you've met in your life are. About two thirds are between five foot one and five foot seven. Does that seem reasonable to say? I hope, maybe. Okay. And then, uh, and we would say about ninety-five percent of adult U.S. women have heights between 5'1 what, 58 inches, so that's 4 foot 10, and 70 inches, 5 foot 10. Okay, and I also hope that kind of matches your somewhat intuitive sense of. So maybe about 1 in 20 women will uh, be outside of this range of 410 and 510. Okay. And actually, the, the range is probably a tiny bit more narrow. Did, it, did I mess something up? Uh, 70 inches should be 5'10". Okay. Yeah. Yeah. What was that? No. Just a mental, mental calculator mistake. Okay, and then, uh, and then we say the same thing. About 99.7% are between or have heights between uh, 55 inches and... 71 inches, so 4, 7, and 6, 1. Okay, so pretty much almost all the women that you meet will be between 4, 7, and 6, 1, with about 3 in a thousand being outside of that range. So you might meet someone who's extremely tall or someone who's extremely short, but only about 3 in a thousand. Okay. Unless you know, unless you uh, put yourself in a location that attracts really hot, tall or really short people. So, for example, if maybe if you visit the uh, women's volleyball team or women's basketball team, you'll find uh, kind of uh, a larger number of people who are very tall. As opposed to what what you might expect in just your random encounters. Yes. Oh, seventy three. Yeah. Oh, sorry, seventy three, which would be six foot one. I can't type and or write and say things, so that would be six foot one, and this would be four foot seven. But that is it's a good catch. Okay. Okay. So that, that's the um, kind of the normal distribution. And a lot, of, um, a lot of things, especially based on our bones, follow the normal distribution. A lot of things in nature, you know, the size that some animals are, or size of whatever, follow the normal distribution. Um, intelligence, IQ scores follow the normal distribution. Uh, think things of that nature. Uh, weight, human weight does not follow the normal distribution. That is, what do you think? Skewed left, skewed right, bimodal, what do you think? Skewed right. 
right. Skewed right. Okay, human weight is unimodal, but it's skewed right because uh, if let's say average is 160 or 170 pounds, um, it would, it's a lot more unusual to be, say, 150 pounds underweight, or 150 pounds below average than it is to be 150 pounds above average. Now, both, both of those are very uh, extreme numbers, but um, yeah. Do we say average in terms of like what's healthy for a person, or like? No, just just the average being the mean, or okay. uh, yeah. I feel like as we like gain more weight, the average changes. Right, the average changes, um, but in terms of uh, even then, as as we as a species are getting uh, heavier, um, even then it still remains right skewed. So and you then, well, the average might be overweight. I don't know. Um, I think our average BMI is, you know, kind of pushing that boundary of 20, 25, I think, is the, uh, the boundary between normal and, uh, and what's considered overweight. Um, and I think we're, we're fast approaching that. It's like 24.7 or something um, for, the, for the average American. Um, uh, you know, this, this uh, class just on statistics, I can't talk about the uh, general nutrition of our population, although that is a very fascinating um, subject. Um, yeah, BMI also uh, right skewed, because uh, that's a combination of height and weight ratio. So anyway, okay. So. Let's uh, let's just check our understanding um, approximately what percentage of women are taller than 67 inches. So you should be able to kind of get at this. Yeah, so let's, uh, so not 32, so what, what percentage of women are taller than 67 inches? So I heard Stefan say it, 16, 16%, 16%, you see that? So I said about, about 68% is between here and here, right? So if 68% are between here and here, then that means um, over here, and over here, combined would make what? 32% or whatever is, you know, 100% minus 68%. But that would be split between this. So I would have 16% over here, and I would have 16% over here. Okay, about. Just about that much. So about 16% of women are shorter than 61 inches, 16% of women are taller than 67 inches. Is that all right? Okay. About what percentage of women are shorter than 58 inches? So just think of the answer in your head. So about what percentage of women do you think are shorter than 58 inches? Okay. Let's, uh, let's see if... Uh, I know, uh, so, yeah. All right, maybe, I don't know how you guys feel about me calling you out, but, uh, <laughs> huh? Short, shorter than 58 inches. Shorter than 58 inches, what do you think? Richard, do you have an idea? Kate? Eight? Eight? No, not eight. So... What did we say was between uh, how much? What percentage are between two standard deviations of the mean? What did I say? Ninety-five percent, right? Ninety-five. Yeah. So let's uh, let's just make sure we're getting this. Okay. Uh, maybe I'll draw another 
I'll draw another one of these things. You know what? Let me steal the uh, picture out of the textbook. better than anything I can draw. Okay, so right here, I can do this. So this splits my thing directly in half, and I said right here goes 64, one standard deviation over here, one standard deviation above, so that takes me to 67 and 61, and 58, and 70 and 73, and 55. Okay, so I said approximately, let's see, where's my, um, let's do this, okay. So I said about 68% uh, between here and here, right? Okay, and then I said 95% from here to here. So if I include uh, maybe this bright neon green here. Okay. So now I'm asking, uh, so, so I'm going to call, call in Kate again. So, um, what, what percentage do you think are shorter than 58? Like 2, I don't know, like 2.5%. Yeah, 2.5%, exactly. Okay. That's not the color I want. Yeah, so we've got 95% in between here and here, so that leaves me 2.5% over there and 2.5% over here. Is that okay? All right. What if I asked a question like, um, okay, let's uh, let's just keep it simple. So, so what percentage of women are shorter than sixty-four inches? And you guys would immediately tell me what? 50%, right? 64 goes right down the middle here. Okay, so we see immediately that 50% of women are shorter than that, okay? And, uh, and earlier I said, you know, what percentage of women are taller than 67? You said 16% are taller than 67. So what percentage is shorter are shorter than 67 inches. Let's see, you tell me 84%. Okay, is that, is that okay with everybody? Yeah? Okay, what if I asked you what percentage is shorter or are shorter then 65 inches. Okay, so this one, this one, we don't have a, we don't have a real good way to answer this, right? So 65, 66, 67. So I'm essentially drawing a line here, and I'm asking, uh, you know, what percentage is shorter than than this? So I want to know how much is over uh, this way. Okay. Well, we know that answer is going to have to be between what and what. 
what percentage is shorter than 65? We know it has to be more than more than 50 percent and also definitely less than well definitely less than 84 percent right okay so so we don't know right now but we do know it must be over 50 percent but also less than 84 percent. Is this, uh, is this okay with everybody? Okay. Well, here's a nice thing about the normal table is that all normal distributions, whether we're talking about the height of women in the United States or the height of men in Russia or whatever, if something follows a normal distribution, we could talk about the, uh, the weight of, uh, of bears, okay, if that, that follows a normal distribution, I don't know if it does. But if something follows a normal distribution, or approximately a normal distribution, um, then they all have the same shape, okay? Um, they all have this property of, you know, about 68% is within one standard deviation of the mean, uh, about 95% is within two standard deviations of the mean. They all have the same shape. They might have a different center, they might have a different standard deviation, but the shape is the same. And so the neat thing is that we, if we convert our measurements into z-scores, we can answer these questions, okay? So a z-score is the distance we are from the mean measured in standard deviations, okay? Or the z-score is how many standard deviations are we away from the mean? So I'll write this up, both definitions here. Okay, so a z-score. Uh, the number of standard deviations we are from the mean Or another way to think of it is, how far are we from the mean okay, ex expressed in standard deviations? Okay, so let's, um, let me just throw this, this thing up here. Okay, and so we said, uh, Oops. So 64, 67, 70, 73, 61, 58, 55. Okay. So someone 67 inches tall, so z score of a woman who is 67 inches tall is plus one, okay? She is one standard deviation, because each standard deviation is three inches, she is one standard deviation above the mean, so her z-score is plus one, or just, just one, okay? So uh, some, uh, a woman who is 58 inches tall would have a z-score of what? is minus 2. Okay, so then what is the z-score of the woman who is 65 inches tall? Can you say, can you say plus one third? Yeah, plus one third, or uh, we might just say 0.3333, okay? or z equal to plus one-third, that's fine. Okay. Is that okay? And so, 
uh, what you guys are doing in your head is the formula for z scores. You're finding the uh, distance from the mean, y minus mu, and then you're taking that distance and you're dividing by the standard deviation sigma. Okay? So basically you're doing distance from the mean on top divided by sigma. So you get the distance expressed in standard deviations. Is that okay? All right, so then um, let me just save this, and we'll just do a quick check here. So let's say um, I'm totally making up numbers here. Uh, but let's say, uh, I don't know, what's a species of dog or breed of dog? Let's say beagles. How, what's the average size of a beagle? Now I'm curious. Average weight of beagle. It says 22 to 24.3 pounds. Oh, and apparently it's different for males and females. Okay. So let's say um, average weight of a beagle male, we'll say is 23 pounds with standard deviation equal to 1.5 pounds. I have no idea. Okay. All right. So tell me, what is the z-score of beagle weighing... Um, 25.1 pounds. Assuming, uh, well, quick check. Okay. So Beagle male will say the mean is 23 and the standard deviation is one and a half. What's the z-score of a dog weighing 25.8? Let's see. Oops. Okay, so it sounds like you guys are getting it. Okay, so you just take the distance, 25.1 minus 23, and we see, oh, this beagle is 2.1 pounds above the mean, okay? But we don't want the, uh, the difference expressed in pounds, we want it expressed in standard deviations. So I'm going to do 2.1 divided by 1.5, and I get 1.4. Okay, so I get a z equal... 1.4 and again I did 25.1 minus 23 divided by one and a half okay so it sounds like seems like you got it but uh, is there, I just want I want to make sure everyone's feeling okay and uh, but I don't want to call anybody out either so um, but everyone's everyone's good here. Everyone's good. Okay. All right. Okay. So we will uh, we'll go on then. Okay. So um, let's uh, let's take a look at our uh, our table here. Okay. Hello. This okay. So what is the z score? So if, if I wanted to just label this picture with z-scores, what z-score goes right here? 
zero, right? Where we want to know distance from the mean expressed in standard deviations. The z-score here is zero, okay? So, you know, if, if we, uh, you know, if, let's say we talked about it in heights, height, if we, you know, we said 64, 67, you know, 70, 73, but if we look at the z-scores right here, it's just zero, okay? So what's the z-score right here? At 67, I am at, my z-score would be? Yeah, plus one, okay? Yeah, we're one sigma above the mean, but so our z-score, um, so the distance from the mean is sigma, but our z-score is just plus one, here it's plus two, and here it's plus three. Okay, and over here it's minus one, minus two, Minus three, okay? So if I shaded everything to the left of zero, what percentage would I have shaded? Of, if every, okay, so let's say if I shade everything, that's 100%. If I shade everything to the left of zero, what, what percentage have I shaded? 50%, right? So if I shade everything to the left of z equal to 0, I have shaded 0.5 of the curve of the, I guess, area under the curve. Okay. Is that OK? All right. So if we take a look at our um, graph here, okay, the uh, look at uh, table three and flip it over to page the other side, the continued side. So let's uh, let me pull this up here. Okay, so if I if I flip it over to the next side, I see in the very top left corner. I see the intersection of 0, 0.0 and 0, 0.00. Okay? So this very top number up here is 0. 0.5000. Okay? And so this says basically if z is equal to 0, 0.0 plus 0, 0, 0.00, which equals 0, 0.00. Then the area to the left is 0 0.5000. That's what it means. Okay? So you take um, the row, which is 0, 0.0, and then you add the column, 0, 0, for a total of z equal to 0, 0, 0.00 or just 0. And the area to the left is 0 0.5. And that makes sense, right? OK. All right, so let's, uh, OK, so based on the empirical rule, how much, about how much is to the left of negative 1, z equal to negative 1? What did we say? We said about 68% is between negative 1 and plus 1. So how much is to the left of minus 1 by itself? about 16%, right? So from empirical rule, we have about 16% to the left of z equal to minus 1. OK, let's look in our table. I'm going to go to z equal to negative 1, negative 1.0, and I would go to the column 0 0.00 because I want negative 1 exactly. And I get 0.1587. So I look up z equal to negative 1.0 plus 0.00. OK. And I guess, well, yeah, it should be um, the negative is on the uh, entire thing. OK. And so I get negative 1.00. 
z is equal to, uh, in the area to the left, so is 0.1587. Okay. So then let's look up um, for height is 65. What did we say the z-score was? The z-score was positive one-third, or let's just round off to 0 0.33. Okay? So I would go to the row, 0 0.3, and the column, 0 0.03. And what do I find there? 3707. Uh, we want the positive side. So I get 0.6293. OK, so the area to the left is 0.6293. OK, so at 65. If I shade everything to the left, everything to the left of 65, that makes 0.6293. Okay, so then how much will I have over in the unshaded side? Yes, yeah, so I would do 1 minus 0 0.6293, and I get 0 0.3707. Or another way, because it's symmetric, the area to the left of positive 0.33, I'm, I'm sorry, the area to the right of positive 0.33, I could, uh, you know, flip this around, and it would be, the same as the area to the left of negative 0.33. Right? So I can you can imagine just the, the mirror image of it. Oops. Nah, I don't know how to do this. Ah, okay. I don't want that done. <laughs> okay. But you can imagine um, it, it flipping around and the area to the right of positive 0.33 is the area to the left of negative 0.33. So uh, there's, there's two ways we can do it. We can do 1 minus 0 0.6293, which is what we have in our picture, 0.3707. Um, or we can look up negative 0.33. Is that OK? So let's just try a few uh, egg exercises just to uh, check our understanding here, okay? And then we'll take a short break. Okay, so we'll, uh, we'll go with our beagles with my made up numbers. So we'll say beagle males. We'll say follow a normal distribution with mean, uh, I forgot what I said, 22 and standard deviation 1.5? It doesn't matter. I said 23 and 1.5. OK, so we'll say that. OK, so then I'm going to ask you a few questions here. What, so we'll say 23 and 1.5. What percent of beagles, beagle males, weigh less? Then uh, we'll say t we'll start off with 21, 25.1 pounds. What percent of beagle males weigh more than uh, 22 pounds? Uh, what percent? of beagle males weigh more 
then um, 26 pounds. Uh, I'm going to change that to 26.3 pounds. Okay, so that should be enough to get you guys started. So uh, pay careful attention to the words less versus more. And uh, I'll give you guys a couple minutes to try to answer these. Okay, so, um, so looking around, I know uh, some of you guys got this down solid, and then some of you are struggling a little bit more. Um, let's, uh, let's take a look here, okay? So for all of these, we want to turn everything into a z-score. So once again, a z-score is the distance we are from the mean, um, positive or negative, uh, expressed in standard deviations, okay? And so, you know, the way we can find our z-scores is we take each of our values and we subtract off the mean and we divide that distance or difference by sigma, okay? So this first one, we are at 25.1 and we subtract off the mean of 23 and we divide by one and a half and we get the distance to be 2.1 divided by uh, the standard deviation 1.5 and we get a z equal to positive 1.4. Okay, so I'm hoping, I'm hoping everybody, everybody's good here. And I think looking around, it, we did see that. Okay, and and the question here is, what percentage of beagle males weigh less than 25.1 pounds? So, if I were to um, draw, uh, whoops, let's just shrink this down here. Okay, draw a little little picture here, okay? We can imagine the center, what number goes in the center? 23 goes in the center, right? Oops. So 23 goes in the center, and I'm asking what percentage are less than 25, okay? So, or 25.1. Uh, so I wanna know how much is basically to the left of 25.1. So we know it's going to be uh, definitely more than a half. So I'm going to look up positive 1.4 in my z table. And so for that, I'm going to go to the row 1.4. And the column, I'm just going to use 0 .00 because my number is 1.40. OK, so, so the number I find there is 0.9192. OK, and so this area, is 0.9192. So we look up z equal to 1.40 in the table. And just uh, kind of slide these. OK. Is that all right? So let's, uh, let's try the next one here. And uh, I'm going to just shrink this down a little bit, OK? OK, so we want to go know what, weigh, what percentage weigh more than 22, OK? So let's say, uh, so in the middle, again, I have 23. And here I'm drawing lower than 23, not quite one full standard deviation, but lower than that. So I go down to 22, and I want to know what percentage weigh more than 22. So I know that my final answer should be definitely more than one half. Can, uh, Richard, can you can you see that that we should ha that our final answer should be more than one half? Because because in, in the middle, 23 goes in the middle, and I'm asking how much weigh more than 22. And 22 is a number lower than the middle. And I'm asking how much weigh more than that 
So the area to the right has to be more than a half, right? So, we, so that's kind of like a, a common sense check that we can get, right? So if I get a number smaller than a half, I know I did something wrong or I haven't finished my, uh, my work. Okay, so I gotta get, turn this into a z-score, right? So 22 is lower than 23. Okay, so I get negative one over one and a half and I get negative 0 0.66666, okay? So on. Um, and I wanna look this up in my z-table, okay? But the z-table only gives me to two decimals of precision, so I've got to round this off to two dec decimals, and so I'm going to use z equal to negative 0.67. So, Kate, we're good there? Okay, and then so when I look up z equal to negative 0.67, what is the number that I get? Two five one four, right? So I go to the row negative point six, and the column point oh seven. Okay, so I go to the row negative zero point six, and the column point zero seven. And when I get do that, the area that it spits out uh, is point two five one four. Okay. Is that my answer? No, okay, because the table always gives me the area to the left, and I know that my answer can't be less than one half. So it's asking for what's more, so I'm going to do one minus 0.2514, and I get 0.7486, and that's gonna be my answer, okay? Another alternative shortcut is once I see that I want the area to the right of negative 0.67, I can say, hey, the table always gives me the area to the left, but it's symmetric. So instead of looking up negative 0.67 and finding, finding that area and subtracting from one, I could just look up positive 0.67 and find the area to the left. And, and indeed, if I look up positive 0.67, I get 0.7486 also. Okay, so. So, you know, that saves a, one step of subtracting it from one, but, you know, it saves you a step, right? Okay, so, uh, so another way is also we can look up area to the left of positive 0 0.67. Michelle, are we good? I'm hoping. Okay. All right, all right. So let's do this last one. What percentage of beagle males weigh more than 26.3 pounds? Okay, so I'm going to shrink this down. All right, and let's try this. Okay, so 23 goes in the middle, but I'm not at 23, I'm going out to 26.3 pounds, which is gonna be way out over here. And I'm asking what percentage weigh more than that? Okay, so according to my picture, that number should be pretty small. Okay, and we know it's gonna be a pretty small number. So anyway, I look up Z equal to 26.3 minus the mean of 23, divided by 1.5, okay. So I do, you know, 26.3 minus 23, 3.3, .3, I divide that by 1.5, and I get 2.2. .2. I get z equal to 2.2. .2. So again, I can look up the area to the left of z equal to 2.2, .2, and I get the area to the left of 2.2 .2 is 0.9861. Okay, so I get 0.9861. And so the area to the right over here is going to be 1 minus 0.9861, which gives me what? 0.0139, okay? Alternatively, I could have just said, oh, positive 2.2, .2, let's go to negative 2.2, .2, and look up the area to the left of negative 2.2, .2, and I get 0.0139 as well, okay? But, so, the answer here, 
So all of these, I guess, I don't know if I need to convert into percentages, but it would be 1.39%. And over here, I would get 74.86%. And over here, 91.92%. Uh, okay. But there you have it. Is this, is this feeling okay with everybody? All right, let's, um, let's pause here.